Hi, my name is Mitchell and I'm a manufacturing engineer here at Haas Automation. For today's service video, we'll be looking over how to properly replace the cables on your Haas rotary table, trunnion, or indexer. But before we go through this process, let's begin by checking the cable connection between your rotary and the machine for damage. These are a few things that will indicate your cable needs to be replaced. Make sure there is no coolant contamination, dust, or chips preventing a good connection from being made. Next, check that the pins are not broken or bent. If the cable connection is good, the problem could lie elsewhere along the cable or with the connection in the control panel. For help troubleshooting these issues, find the Rotary Troubleshooting Guide online at haascnc.com service or talk to a Haas service representative. Once you have determined that your rotary cable needs to be replaced, we can now go over how to complete this process on your rotary table, trunnion, or indexer. Note that there are several different types of cables used on these units, but for the purpose of this video, I will only be demonstrating one of them. First, make sure to disconnect the unit's power cables and airline and remove the unit from the machine. Next, locate the junction box, also called the J-box, on the enclosure. If the J-box is attached directly to the cover plate, unscrew the bolts on the cover plate and carefully remove it from the rest of the enclosure assembly making sure not to pull on or damage any of the wires. If the J-Box is attached to the enclosure, locate the cover plate adjacent to the J-Box, unscrew the bolts, and carefully remove it. Next, locate the J-Box wires inside the enclosure, remove and set aside any cable wraps, and disconnect the cable connectors. This may take some finagling, so be patient and ensure that the cables are properly disconnected and none of the enclosure wiring gets damaged. I'll cover the different connection types and how to properly connect and disconnect them later on in this video, so make sure to stay tuned until then. So now that we've got our cables disconnected, if you happen to be working in a dirty environment, consider covering the enclosure connectors with painter's tape to prevent any dirt, coolant, or chips from getting in while swapping out cables. At this point, unscrew the bolts on the J-Box if you have not already and remove the J-Box with the damaged cables. Remove the J-Box gasket and make sure to clean off any residue that may be left over before proceeding. Next, align the new J-Box gasket using the four holes and attach it to either the cover plate or enclosure, depending on the location of the J-Box. Route the cables through the opening, but do not fasten down the new J-Box. Using one of the cable wraps you saved, Wrap the J-Box cables together approximately two inches from the J-Box. Attach the cables together, ensuring that they are properly connected and routed within the enclosure. Avoid pinching or kinking the cables and airlines when routing them within the enclosure. Once all the cables have been properly routed, use the remaining cable ties to organize the cables within the enclosure and fasten down the J-Box. Next. Remove the enclosure gasket and clean the surface of any excess residue. Once it is clean, install the new gasket to the enclosure. Apply a small amount of RTV in each through hole, which will help keep coolant from entering the enclosure. If your unit uses an O-ring instead of a gasket, make sure to clean the surface of any chips that may cause it not to seal properly. However, do not replace the O-ring unless it is broken or damaged. Next. Fasten down the cover plate until the bolts are snug, but do not over tighten them. Lastly, reconnect the machine cables and airline to the machine to make sure that there is no issues with the new cable connections. Now this process can be used on all of our rotary table, trunnions, and indexers. However, it should be noted that for indexers, the entire motor enclosure must be fully removed in order to access the cable connections, rather than just a cover plate. When completing this process, there are several different types of connectors that you will encounter. The first is an amphenol connector. On these connectors, there's either a keyed lug inside the connector or an identifying arrow on the case. Align the identifying features and push the cable connector directly onto the receiving connector. If the cable connector has a knurled ring, turn it clockwise until it's snug. There's no need to over tighten the ring. To disconnect it, turn the ring counterclockwise until the connector comes loose. If the cable connector has a keyed shell, 
push it straight on to the receiver until it clicks into place. To remove it, turn the shell counterclockwise, then pull the connector straight off. Never twist the connector itself. You can damage the wires and pins inside. The second are mini-fit connectors. Mini-fit connectors are used on cables that carry both power and data. They come in a variety of sizes, but are distinguished by the prominent latching device on one side. To connect this cable, push it straight onto the receiver connector until the latch clicks into place. Always pull on the connector, not the wire. To remove it, push down on the latch. Squeeze on the latch as you pull it straight out. Make sure you never twist it into place. We use screw terminals to complete some connections. If it's a ring lug, remove the screw, center the ring over the hole, and then replace the screw. Again, tighten the screw only until it's snug. Finally, one of the more difficult connectors that you may encounter is this 90 degree connection that you see here. If your hands are small enough, you may be able to pull off the connection just fine. Otherwise, use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull off the connection. Make sure to only hold on to the outer covering of the connector, as it is easy to accidentally pull out the wire if you are not careful. For more information on your Haas rotary or any other Haas service related information, visit haascnc.com/service. Thanks for watching.